Hey, guys and gals, welcome to the Oxford Holy Club, a place where we ready ourselves to give an answer for the hope that's in us. We will also try to answer your questions, random questions from the interwebs, and have some fun too. So put some seatbelts on your ears because we're in for a wild ride. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Oxford Holy Club podcast, your podcast of choice for all things Oxford Holy Club. Welcome to episode 118 entitled Unity versus, or is it just unity or uniformity? Uh, we're going to uh, get into it tonight a little bit, have some conversation. Uh, we're going to be getting into a tiebreaker that we didn't get to last week that's ice cream related. Very important. And a marriage hangs in the balance yet again. How they keep finding us uh, is beyond me. And, and yet here we are. Is uh, it multiple marriages or just one that's always on the rocks constantly? <laughs> we just keep pushing them back from the ledge every week. Yeah, that's what we do. Uh, hello, Heroes. mother. Hello, Scott. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, nice to see you both here tonight. And Scott, yes. That was definitely an 80s themed uh, intro. Love it. Uh, we're going to catch up, see what's going on. We're Like I said, we're going to talk about unity, uniformity during what we've called the Holy Huddle. And we've got a sports and star stuff tonight. Uh, and so looking forward to that. And if you, now let's see, is it working? It moved on me. We've got something, uh, we've got something different taking place uh, that should go up on the screen that if you chat... It should actually pop up on the screen. Now, I wasn't sure how big to make it on the screen because uh, I can never test the size of things unless the three of us are on a Zoom call to see how things fit. And I grossly uh, miscalculated how much space Andrew's video takes up. So things may be smaller on the screen than I initially had hoped for. So if you're texting us through the chat uh, on Facebook, you may see it pop up on the screen. That remains to be seen. And we'll see how big it looks and we'll, you know, we'll fix it from there. Anyway, uh, if you want to find out anything and everything about the Oxford Holy Club, you can go to OxfordHolyClub.com. And from there, you can find us on all the social medias. You can browse merch. You can, if you enjoy Smorp, if you know what that is, uh, you can download the document there for the month of September and so on and so forth and all of that stuff. And if you would just do us, what are you doing there, Lucas? What's good? Uh I saw Andrew pouring liquid, so I also wanted to do it since I had some on hand. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> Way to go, no liquid. We, we texted each other beforehand. <laughs> Guys, we're all in the same te- – wait, do you have a separate text chain? No. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just called a normal text. <laughs> a text between two people does not make a chain. Oh. Or does it? That could be a tiebreaker. We'll find out. Or does it? Okay. Um. So – we are going to uh, we're going to move move along here. Oh, I know what I wanted to say. If you could uh, click share on on this post, it's not going to force this podcast down anyone's throat. If you do that, all it does is it puts it on your Facebook feed, and then anyone that's your friend on Facebook, uh, they just see that it's there. They don't have to watch it, but wouldn't it be cool to spread the Oxford Holy Club around? I'm uncomfortable with that sentence, and so I'm going to move things along and toss to. Andrew and I can't find any of my cues. The tiebreaker. Dun dun dun. All right. So we have a tiebreaker today. If you have a tiebreaker of your own that you want to submit to us, you can visit OxfordHolyClub.com and do that. We would love to help you with your dilemma and uh, save your marriage and or friendship and or relationship with your son. I don't know. Or animals. Uh, yeah. So Rainer says, uh, we often find in our house that ice cream straight from the freezer is rock solid and thereby difficult, oh, got a cat. Uh, difficult to scoop. I approach this issue with either a heated spoon, brute force, or some combination of both. My wife, Agnes, on the other hand, leaves the ice cream out on the countertop until it softens up enough to scoop with little resistance melted and subsequently refrozen ice cream obtains an undesirable texture agnes mm. is convinced that the benefits of scoopability outweigh any taste or texture related damages i would like <laughs> agnes to adopt one of the following techniques heated spoon brute force see some new technique that protects the sanctity of the ice cream texture please advise mm. 
Mm-hmm. Luke, you seem to resonate there with the texture. Yeah, this is a difference. Something, uh, no, something here's the home. thing. I don't find if it if it Hold gets on. a little soft. Oh, what's Melissa's yes. what's Melissa's middle name? Is it Melissa Agnes? <laughs> it is not. No, no. Lucas Please. Rain, Lucas Rainer, and Melissa Agnes. <laughs> That's right. Uh, no, here's the thing. Like, I it doesn't always like sometimes if it's just a little soft. But I feel if it's like fully melted, then it gets all crystally and like undesirable texture on, on board 100%. Um, now, I but here's the problem. I'm sure Agnes, not to judge by the name, but probably does but not have a go. bunch of upper body it's strength. Made up. which, which makes, uh, well, even still, like it's, it's a, you got to have a lot of upper body strength to do the scoop. Uh, so brute force is usually off the table for a lot of people. Um, heated spoon is a great idea for about th- like three millimeters into the ice cream. And I find you get that first two millimeters easy and then it just you hit the wall again. So I don't know. I find some it's some it's funny because you'll be scooping ice cream and every now and then you'll get one that's like rock solid. And you're like, I've scooped ice cream before. Why is this putting up so much of a fight? I can't stand it when ice cream gets melted and it gets put back in the freezer and and I don't mean to sound wasteful. I know that it's just melted and it's, you know, it's just going back in, but there's something about it and it seems to me that it wouldn't matter how easy like it doesn't matter how easy I'm going to it's going to get weird here. Who cares how easy it is to scrape a turd? It's still a turd. So, like <laughs> I guess okay. what I, I guess what I'm saying is if get some proverbs. Well, <laughs> yes, book of second opinions, chapter 2, check it out. <laughs> um it doesn't matter to me how easy you can get garbage out of that container. It's now garbage and and waste. So, I think the point of it becoming waste was when it got left out. Uh and so there needs to be um a come to Jesus moment where Agnes gets her life right and stops leaving ice cream out in the counter question who who takes ice cream out of the freezer gets their ice cream and then just moves on and leaves the, and just bounces and goes done like here are they that tired you, you, from scoot well like agnes is leaving the ice cream out and the, before the fact though but but she yeah before before Rainer can get his ice cream Agnes has got there ahead of time, got hers and left the container out. I feel that that's the point. Here's here's, here's my here's my kind of final verdict. Um, here's my for me personally as a human. Um, well, hold on. Here's the situation. I agree with I agree with Brad that like the mushy ice cream it's it's got problems. It's problematic, right? Um, but. I also think if you're going to be persnickety about it, that means Rainer is going to have to do all the scooping. Like, I think it just means Rainer's a scooper. Like if he, if he thinks that brute force is the way to go and he's got, he's got the guns to back himself up. I think he's got to do the scooping and then she just gets to watch. And it must be a, just chalk it up to sacrificial love for your wife, I guess is what you're going to have to do. And it's not fun or just switch to fudgicles. I mean, that's an option too, guys, you know? Oh my goodness. Lucas comes in with a total life change, a, a way yeah, of life. Just, just skip the buckets <laughs> of ice cream. Go to the ice cream on the sticks. Go right to ice cream on a stick or drumsticks or whatever. There's all kinds of single serve ice creams out there of lesser quality. Okay. Let's be honest, of lesser quality, but of ease of use. So I recently had to get ice cream out of my camper and I'll talk about it in our catching up. But we had two things of ice cream left over for my mom's birthday and i had a I, they were in the car with me all the way back to charlottetown and and i had this moment where they were still cold and i'm like they're still fine but they're melty <laughs> and if i freeze that that's going to turn into a top layer of ice that i'm going to have to shovel through and like pick my way through and so i didn't even entertain bringing those into the home for someone to argue with me about it <laughs> i went straight to the black bin outside and went Boop. yeah and they may not be black bin material now that I say it out loud on the air. <laughs> what, uh, what's black bin? In Is it recycling or something? No, it's not recycling. That's waste. That's, that's Is it fuchsia. compost? They fe- in my heart, they felt like waste. Now, what their labels <laughs> might or might may not say. Follow your heart. I had to follow now, my heart. Sonia's saying just turn down the freezer. And I guess that could be the thing. Maybe it's just jacked up to 11 and then maybe that's the problem. 
That could also be it. That could also be it. Okay, well, have you guys run into this? Because we need to figure out what, like... I don't have strong opinions on ice cream. I have... I have one example where I've been bested by ice cream before, and Thank Melissa used to used to love this stuff called chocolate fudge crackle, um, available from uh, the good people at President's Choice. Uh, so it's Prime Minister's Choice, and uh, you can get it in like ten different varieties of crackle ice cream. So all it is is just like chocolate ice cream or whatever kind, and it has these little like chocolate like rods essentially in it, Crackles. and it's basically like rebar. So nice. uh, when you're when you're going through, like you're just starting to get a little bit mo- of momentum, and you're just keeping your own against this ice cream, and all of a sudden you hit the chocolate, which you wouldn't think would slow you down, but it does because you have to try Keep to break through own. it. Yeah, I, I know. I just <laughs> I have a, I have a memory of I have a memory of my, when we first got married. My parents and my brother came over. And we, when we were living in Ottawa and it's like, okay, guys, like we, we had supper, you know, we're being the, the big adults hosting supper here for my parents, and my brother. And as Melissa was like, okay, we'll go get the, ch- I bought the chocolate fudge crackle. It's the best. I was like, oh, great. The ice cream I hate uh, for scooping reasons. Anyway, so I go to do it and they're talking over there and I'm going to scoop it. And it's like rock hard. We must've had it dialed up to 11 and I'm scooping, but I'm like, my arm's like shaking as I'm like <laughs> trying to go through it. And all of a sudden the conversation dies and Jonah just goes, you will help there, buddy. <laughs> I was like, start it. Uh, my brother dunked on me. And then so, did, did uh, he get it? Did you do the whole, I loosened it kind of thing? No, I, I, I powered through, but it wasn't, uh, I'm sure it was. I was probably like scraping thin layers off the top just to get, and then molding it into a, a ball or something. Sad, but yeah. I, I've used the heated, I've used the heated spoon technique to get through this stuff before where I just, st- <laughs> no, I that's, Seems like it would take a while. <laughs> I uh, if I'm by because I'm usually I'm by the sink right when I'm scooping the ice cream, so I just run the hot water over a spoon for a little bit and then right. and then just go in that way. Um, to me, I think Lucas, you had the best solution, which seemed like individual ice cream, single serve. But you can get like you know Ben and Jerry's or whatever have the smaller ones. The problem is you're going to pay more for that. Mm-hmm. So is your life such that you can afford to have two? Because I'm speaking from experience here. Once you move into the Ben and Jerry's bracket, you're not going back. That's the problem. You're in a higher ice cream bracket and everything else is just, it's fine, but you're not really going back for Ben and Jerry's. Uh, ice cream is ice cream. So it's it's one of those things where you say like, we, we you know, we were never ready to make the jump. We were, we, we were, you know, we'd planned and we thought about it and we decided that maybe, you know. You, you just you're, you're never a new line item. You're listen. Uh, you're never ready to make the jump to Ben and Jerry's, and then once you do it, you learn to appreciate it and love it for what it is, and yeah. even when it keeps you up all I mean, night. You can go slum it with some like you know whatever, but it, but you're gonna want Ben and Jerry's all the time at that point. That, okay, let's let's uh, come back here. Uh, thank you for finally here's taking control. <laughs> you're, you're, this is your thing. We have been just riffing until you shut it down. <laughs> Here's my opinion on the matter. If you want to leave the ice cream out to soften it, then you are responsible to stand beside the ice cream and watch it soften, get it, and get it back in the freezer. And I like that. There. Could you, you use like a meat thermometer? Every few minutes. Or like, what's the opposite? Yeah. Uh, uh, something different than a meat thermometer that tracks cold. So you ice could... Cream as, thermometer? Soon as, you, I... as, as soon as you leave it, take it out of the freezer, you are responsible for the well-being of that ice cream. It's your baby. It's like a baby. You wouldn't leave a baby on the counter, would you? <laughs> no. No. No, I the answer not. is no. <laughs> not more than once. <laughs> uh, there. End of, end of discussion. Uh, Barb Mattinson comes in with some probably some sage advice, which is don't put it in the fridge freezer. And I think that's probably a factor. What freezer it could would, be? What, I have no idea. She's what, at the fridge freezer, like the top freezer. Yeah, but then what do you put it in the deep freezer? That's on the bottom. Is... The deep. Oh, I didn't know you were rich. That's fine. Uh, <laughs> bottom fridge people. Which which uh, one? Andrew's the rich one with the bottom fridge people. Yeah, the pull out <laughs> bottom freezer. Oh, that's for the nice. that's for the rich and famous. I guess so. Wow. There the, you go. All that Oxford Holy Club money coming in for Andrew. Also, if you have to go all the way to your Wait basement. To get ice cream, you're gonna do it less often. So that's that's a good strategy as Ooh. well. Yeah. You wait, you guys have basements? Uh you guys are living <laughs> large. Ooh. Uh with your Oops. with your bending over freezers and your basements. My goodness, guys. <laughs> oh, if I had those things, I'd never eat ice cream. <laughs> that's right. Oh my word. 
All right. I think we solved All it. Right. Who's in charge? Great. Marriage saved. <laughs> saved. Buy our own ice cream. I forgot everything was hanging by a thread there for this person. <laughs> Congratulations. Lucas? All right, guys. Let's uh, catch up. Uh, so I think we'll toss to Brad. What have you been up to? Did you guys know there's a storm a brewing? And, I've been hearing. Yeah. So so we knew that the the hurricane or tropical storm or whatever was was on route. And, and I haven't really been tracking what it's been doing it. Go on. Did you ever ask someone how they're doing and then immediately walk away when they respond to you? <laughs> That's funny. I'm super interested to hear your story. Thank you, Andrew, for feigning interest. It's great. <laughs> so we knew the tropical storm was coming and <laughs> So the shed in the back of our home is one that's like a canvas mm -hmm. plastic shed with a like a tent frame type of thing. Yeah. And yeah. And so um, when that kind of time, when, you know, when times of great wind come, I still can't get over the fact you just got up and walked out. Anyway, um, I tied the whole thing down, took the trampoline down, got the pool down, cleaned up the yard. All that kind of stuff was feeling pretty prepared and ready. Wow. You, you missed your cue. You you wait until I've stopped speaking to... Oh. Sorry. That ice cream. I, I was listening the whole time. It's fine. We're, yeah. we're good. Tat, you tattered shed. Go ahead. So so we're cleaning out the shed. Or what? No. You, you, you and your ice cream. So, um, so we got everything on lockdown. We're feeling good about the storm. Ready, prepared. Uh, we've prepped. And then my mom calls, um, who's watching right now, and she goes, Bradley... Uh, I know you were thinking of getting the camper moved off the beach, you know, into October, but there's a hurricane coming. And I'm like, oh my word, the camper. <laughs> you forgot about that. that well, it, that's, sitting, cottage. <laughs> that's sitting on the beach. And, and when the storm surge, like we've, I think, mom can correct me in chat if I'm wrong, but I think over the last 15 years or, uh, or a little bit more, we've lost 150 feet. Uh, of beachfront because of storm surges and stuff like that. Ex Aren't you only like 20 feet from the water? Um, no, we're a little bit more than that. Okay. Uh, but, but in a storm surge, the water will come up to where we are. And mm. uh, that's how we've lost so much property and cabins have gone over and, and just been gone. And so a mom is like uh, your camper, you know, you, you're probably going to want to get that put away before then which began the mad dash of, and it wasn't that complicated of just making all the connections and, and my uncle Blair, thank you, uncle, um, met us there. He and my dad and got everything packed up and towed and put away, but, uh, I still need to go winterize it, but my priority was to get it moved in the barn all, out, of harm's way. out of harm's way. And now all I need to do, I have the antifreeze, but some campers have a, a water pump that has a hose that comes off of it that you can put into your bottle of antifreeze and it just sucks the antifreeze up and runs it through your lines. Well, I've got a water pump, but not that extra attachment. So I have to do it um, with, I have to go get another pump and not a big deal, but that's been, that was, you know, the most eventful thing that we had going on. I've been on the headphone. I've been shopping like headphones like crazy. Cause my, my, uh, my AirPods just gave up the ghost. And so then I got some like Bluetooth in-ear ones and I can't tell if, if because there's so many people around me that have similar ones, it's fr it's like signals are crossing, um, but I find that they are disconnecting a lot. And so now I've got over the ear ones. Also, I don't know if it was you guys I was telling this to that um, when I'm at the when I'm at the gym and I'm using them, I would find that if I'm pushing hard, they would start to like wiggle. Yeah. Look, so okay, and, I, and someone at, one of you asked, and like I had a funny visual of you them. <laughs> okay, so so that that happened minus the whole eye thing. So yesterday, I, I still have them. I'm I'm returning them, but I went and I was on the bench press and I went. I pushed up, and all of a sudden, ding, one just shoots <laughs> out of my ear, and I'm like, well, we'll get that in a second. <laughs> so that's uh, funny. Well, it's just it's just anyway. So now I have over the ear ones that are like sound isolating and and connect through Bluetooth, and I had no issue with them there. But I really wondered if because everybody there has got headphones and uh, I wonder if it was crossing, you know, 
but they were well, this the gym is where you were because i thought you were about at the church mike is everyone just walking around with bluetooth headphones at your church no but no gym the makes gym. a lot more sense I get but, it but even like if even when we were like i'd be at home and there's nothing else going on they would still disconnect so sent them back mm. i have a quick question um related to our catching up the other thing that's on my radar right now is pre-orders are up for the xbox the new xbox series x uh what are you guys doing I, I I'm not pre-ordering. I think you can't. I think you can't pre-order anymore, anyways. Oh, basically, they're gone. already done. <laughs> uh, right. I I my goal is by by like New Year, by oh. Christmas or Boxing Day, to get one. I think if Ma- Mandy can confirm or not, I think I've got her sold on the idea of the uh, Xbox All Access Pass. Right. That one, um, where you can you can get it and you just pay monthly for it. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, but and, and so I was looking for it today. I was ready to to sign up, and uh, and credit card in hand, just ready. well, you don't even need it, right? Like you don't need your credit card. You just go to manage your subscriptions, and you can change it. Now there may be a credit check, but hmm. um, I went to go do it, and and it kept giving me a broken link. And so I searched, and it's not live in Canada yet. Yeah, uh, I think so. So I was talking to the guy at EB Games, and he said it, they were going to do it. They just haven't heard all the details yet. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I'll probably wind up at old EB games. That's what's going on with me. Trying to buy an Xbox, buy headphones and get my camper put away. The end. Pretty good. Pretty yeah. good week. Well, that all happened in like three days. <laughs> oh, I bought new sneakers today. Converse. Oh, high tops. Uh, kind of. I should have had a picture. Mm. I didn't wear them because it was raining. Okay. <laughs> Someone else talk. If I have shoes, I'm afraid to touch the ground in certain weather. I'm I'm less excited about having them. Uh, Andrew, uh, what's up with you? All right. So we have a car and it's. Oh, my oldish. goodness. A bend over freezer, a basement and a car. I know. Right. And for the last for a little while now, you get out of it and you could smell gas. Um, but oh, no, it wasn't like gas. So leaking. I got to quit smoking like real soon. <laughs> Like, I would check, and there's, there was, like, nothing leaking out of it. Anyways, the other day, they started leaking stuff out of it. <laughs> and so I looked under, and there was, like, little droplets coming. By stuff, you like, mean gas. Yeah, yeah. And so I uh, drove it another day, and it got even worse. And so I told my dad, and my dad's really, like, my dad's good at fixing, like, he knows stuff about cars and stuff, but he's also uh, okay with, like, trying new things and not like being super panicky about it like he'll just like go into it and figure it out yeah yeah so he was like okay well let's it basically what happened was the gas line underneath rotted out uh and so there was just a portion that needed to be replaced so he's like okay well we'll just cut it out and go get some like rubber line and replace it or whatever so uh i had left the car at their house because i had driven it there and that's when i noticed so he's like we'll do that tomorrow Anyways, in the night, my dad got called into work at like three in the morning. And so and then he was still there like at 10 o'clock in the morning. Right. <laughs> so like, OK, um, I guess I'll go over and uh, look at the car. <laughs> and I'm, I'll I'm do not, that like, thing. I'm not like incompetent or anything, but like I'm not. I'm not as confident to try like something completely new. Yeah. You're not incompetent, um, but you're also not overly confident. Is that the hmm. problem? So yeah. I'm, I, he's like, okay, we'll just go look at it. You got to get a piece off and then you go match, like go to the, the place and you can try and find some pipe that'll work or whatever. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, I get there and I'm like looking under the car and I'm like, yep. Yeah, okay. Well, there's some, <laughs> there's some pipe under there. <laughs> some, some line. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> The biggest hurdle for me, and this is a strength of my dad as well, is he's very patient. And so he will fiddle and keep fiddling and keep fiddling. And I'm like, we should call the mechanic. And he's like, oh, we got this. So I immediately, I'm like, I like do like two things. I'm like, it's not coming off. (laughs) But I'm like, I'm like, no, I'm going to persevere. And I did it. I got a piece of the line cut off i went to the store i'm like i need some line for my gas line gotta replace it do this all the time you probably see me around here you must be new if you haven't seen me i'm here all the time (laughs) anyways so i got that and i like went i figured out like how to reroute it and like get oh man i did it and there's it it works ah there it is we haven't haven't exploded yet (laughs) do you put your children in the car 
Uh, no, that that doesn't have any car seats in it. It's just the the other car. Okay. I keep it's checking every car. night. Every night Tiffany comes home, I'm like going to check under the car, and I go and inspect under the car, and I'm like, all right, it looks pretty good. <laughs> pretty good. There's I think no wives gas. are going on here more than pretty good. Excellent. <laughs> yeah, excellent. yeah, yeah. So, anyways, Above I was pretty approach. proud of that. That's awesome. Good job, dude. Yeah, I, there's nothing better than when you actually try to do a man thing and then you do it and you're like, that's right, I did it. Because usually when I do it, I fail and usually I'm just too scared to try it in the first place. So, well, uh, this was like, there's no going back. Like, just his wife like, goes in the car. That's from <laughs> Tiffany coming in chat. <laughs> yes. And I've checked the car multiple times to see if it's like going to leak or anything. And I explained what to do if there was a leak. <laughs> so you roll what? out and make just tuck your legs no. in when you have to roll out from the exploding car. You think car. it's just going to like, ex- it's just gonna leak gas. You just turn I've it seen, off and it stops. I've seen mafia gas. movies. Yep. Is were it's those pro- the- Tiffany? Tiffany. T- Tiffany. It's probably fine. It's like yeah. there's like a ten percent chance. It's like it's not. It's not even worth worrying. That's about. not even it's worth fine. worrying about. Fine. Yeah. Tiffany, it's fine. So what are the instructions that you've given your poor wife? <laughs> turn the so car you, off. So turn the car off. You get a match <laughs> and you look underneath. <laughs> <laughs> she has the she's she rides in, in shotgun is a fire extinguisher and she's always got the pin pulled out just in case just ready to go just in case <laughs> yeah oh uh, we have fun though <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's my story for this week fix my and car it's, it's a you know how much story. it cost me guess how much it cost me you're guys. peaking oh, stop yelling <laughs> just pull it back oh, there Seventeen dollars. That is, that is. Oh, that is sweet. That, that feels good. Smooth. That feels good. Uh, all right. So for my catching up, a uh, few things. Hold on. I gotta just take my headphones off and walk out. <laughs> Listen. For the record, I I was listening the entire time mm. uh, while I was scooping that delicious ice cream with real vanilla bean. So uh, it's not quite Ben and Jerry's, but it'll do in a pinch. Now, hey, uh, Lucas. Before you share, did you did you happen to see Andrew's comment about or uh, Scott's comment about Andrew? That he's in the Ben and Jerry's tax bracket. <laughs> I liked it, and I'm laughing at it again two, now. Two cars, going. two cars, a basement and a bend over freezer. <laughs> That's right. A bendy freezer. He's got so much money, he can just give gasoline away wherever. I know. He's around. just pouring it out, pouring it out. I'm so benevolent. <laughs> Take my gas, people. <laughs> people are your neighbors are putting buckets under it at night and stuff. Uh, all right, so. Um, my, I have a nice little story about how I'm an idiot. Uh, those are easy to come up with. We love those. So, um, my, my in-laws, my sister-in-law and her husband, Melissa's sister, they are, um, flipping a house. So they have like a flip house and they're always over there doing the flip house stuff. Flipping it. Flipping it, just flipping and flapping. And they uh, asked me if they said, Hey, uh, can you uh, call our dad to bring a hedge trimmer? And I was like, I was like, Oh no, I've got one of those. Don't worry about it. So. Anyway, so we didn't call the dad to bother him. And I, I was like, I got one in the garage. I'm like, I haven't used it in a while, but I'm sure it's fine. So I go out, I get the hedge trimmer. It's leaking gas. I tried to start it. It wouldn't start, but I was like, oh, then I realized I didn't have any gas in it. I didn't have any mixed gas left. I'm like, that's fine. They can certainly provide that. So I throw in the car, drive all the way across Fredericton to the to the north side, which is like, if you live in Fredericton, you, you act like it's like a two hour drive. Uh, you're like, oh, my word, this is the north side. So I went all the way over to the north side. Back to lunch. Pack a lunch. That's right. We treat it like Dartmouth. Anyway, that's that's a Halifax joke for all our Halifax fans. Uh, so anyway, we go over there, and so I walk up to her. Is like, hey, here I am. I got the thing, and she's like, oh great, thanks. Um, that's a hedge trimmer, eh? She's like, so this is a hedge trimmer, and I look down. It's no, it's not a hedge trimmer. I brought her a whipper snipper. <laughs> the entire time in my brain, I kept hearing whipper snipper, and as she like holds it and looks at their giant hedges that they need to trim, and I'm like. I was like, oh, no, I'm sorry. It's not a hedge trimmer. Oh, no, here's the he said, this is a hedge trimmer? And in my head, it was still making the conversion. I was like, yeah, this is a hedge trimmer. Like, dummy, yes, it's a hedge trimmer. Just hold what it up do? like this. <laughs> yeah, the 10-foot long thing. And then actually, and then we get two steps down the, st- the, the walkway. And I was like, oh, no, that's not a hedge trimmer. I'm so sorry. Like, that, I'm, a, I'm an idiot. Like, you want me to just take this? She's like, oh, no, I'm sure. You know, she's trying to be, like, nice. She's like, I'm sure we'll find a use for it. <laughs> so had you convinced her that it was a hedge trimmer? Because it sounds like you two no, are walking now she, together. I think with... she knows what a hedge trimmer is. And she's like, oh, no. He, oh, bless your heart. He thinks it's <laughs> yes, a hedge bless trimmer. your heart. Was... <laughs> Lucas is a simpleton. Come on, guys. A hedge trimmer. <laughs> so, yeah. So anyway, I brought the uh, whippersnipper hedge trimmer over. 
Uh, and then I promptly, you know, had the long drive home to think upon my, my shame, See my shame, my great, great shame, shame, my great, my great shame. Uh, yeah. So that was basically it. Other, other news. Um, last week, uh, Melissa, I came home from somewhere and was like, yeah, I think I saw a mouse. I was like, you saw a shadow or you saw a mouse? She's like, I think, I'm pretty sure I saw a mouse. I'm like, okay, we'll treat it. You know, I got out our little traps and set them up and See, we had mice last year. We think like a pregnant one got in and then had a bunch of babies because we got, they were all tiny, the ones that we caught. And it was and if you've ever had mice, it's just so stressful because you're like, where are they? How many are they? Are they like, you know, going to... What are they know, plotting? Like sick or what oh, are they yeah. plotting? And all that sort of thing, right? So, and and it was stressful because for a long time we kept catching them and like, oh, when's the end of this like this you know nightmare? This mouse riddled nightmare. Anyway, so it went down and I, I caught one and I was like, darn it and i was like anyway and i've put all the traps out and it's been like a week and a half and no more so i think it was a one-off a one and done we got we, we cut the head off the snake you know theoretically not actually but uh, literally but here's the here's the, the the not great story when i was going when i was going to get the mouse the mouse traps and like we had buy those ones that you like you pinch them and they have the, like the claw like instead of the ones you have to like set them all delicately mm -hmm. i was like where are they because i know i bought a bunch back during the last like mouse invasion Anyway, I was like, oh yeah, I was like, oh yeah, I left one underneath the my like tool cabinet. So I get down there and I was like, oh no. Uh, and I pull it out and it was closed and there was a mouse skeleton on it. Like not only did I catch one a long time ago, but the thing I don't get is I thought that would have like stunk out my whole house, but it didn't. So didn't I don't it? know how that I didn't it. I don't think it did. Have you had, uh, have you had company over <laughs> since, since you said not yeah. recently? They just won't take our invitations. Yeah. So anyway, and I pull it out, and it was like a literal like like a cartoon Lucas, skeleton of a mouse. Lucas and animals. Yeah, oh, yeah. seriously, punching birds and, and killing mice. Turns so, out Lucas anyhow. saves the skeletons. <laughs> I also got a raccoon in my garbage bin again, but that's so often that it doesn't even warrant mentioning. Are you going to hang uh, that skeleton outside as a cautionary tale to any mouse that may gonna leave it in there? May show up? Uh, no, I let them go. I, they're too cute to to leave like that. So anyway, that's my catch up. I have. Uh, I'm not good with tools or animals. Uh, when I find a strength, I will be the first. <laughs> will one you please know. let us know, my man? Yeah, we look forward to celebrating you with you on that day. <laughs> So, Brad, I think we have a holy huddle to talk about. Well, why don't we get into a holy huddle to talk about? And all this really is, is um, instead of doing a smorp, which we've been enjoying, it's just to have some different type of conversation. And I shot the guys a message last week about this because I'm, I'm currently in a theology course uh, with Northwestern Nazarene University. And, uh, and so I was reading through and this little phrase jumped out at me and just grabbed my attention. And so I wanted to bring it to the guys just to see uh, what, what kind of conversation we could have around it. And so we haven't ch really talked about it. We save our conversations and friendship for the air. <laughs> we, don't, we don't ask each other anything throughout the week. We leave it all till here. But uh, I, so I was reading and, and what I was reading was a, about why studying theology or the study of God, why that's important. And uh, so this is basically a course validating itself, but that's fine. <laughs> Whatevs. But but I was reading I was reading and it was talking about um, about how in understanding theology and who God is, the Holy Spirit plays a huge role and, and the biggest role in our understanding of that. But then it said something. And this is this is what uh, I want to get into. It says, um we must trust the goodness of the Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth. Ultimately, the Holy Spirit can never be the spirit of strife uh, or disunity. He's always, and this is the part that really jumped out at me, he is always the spirit of unity, which is not exactly the same as uniformity. And he is love, charity, and grace. I'm going to drop this little quote into um, into the chat uh, for those that would like to give it a, a read. And so what, fellas, what jumped out to me was this idea that uh, the spirit is a spirit of unity, which isn't the same as uniformity. And, 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 and I really spent a lot of time kind of mulling that over going, okay, well, what, what does that mean? And how does that apply to, to our culture today? 
when everyone is it seems to me that and, and I, I don't know what you guys think we are trying to put everybody in a box and make them all the same they have to be, you have to believe the same think the same learn the same and I, I don't know do you guys see that at all out there is it just me being a whack job well, I, th I think it's natural for like, you know, a great example that would be like denominations, right? Like they're, they're they don't all, they, they kind of fall, fall into certain like kind of categories and the bigger the denomination, the broader that category is, but you, you'll get the like, you know, Baptists making fun of the Wesleyans and the Wesleyans making fun of the, you know, the Baptists and then both of them making fun of the Nazarene. Oh, come on. And, 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 and I mean, to me, like when I was younger, I was a little more like, oh yeah, like they're whatever. And we're the smart ones. But you know, as you get older, you realize that like, well, first of all, Nazarenes have smart. been on the top of the hill of truth the whole time. That's <laughs> how wrong I was <laughs> sitting there with my hedge trimmer. That was actually a whippersnapper. <laughs> uh, yeah. And, and, and I, I still remember, uh, there was an episode of the Simpsons where it was like, it was like Catholic and Protestant. And then Bart has this big speech at the end. And he's like, everybody like our big, stupid differences are nothing compared to our big, stupid similarities. And I always thought that was a funny line. And th there's really, when you break it down and you, and you really look at the world, like when you're stuck in the church bubble, you just spend all your time thinking like, Oh, well they the us versus them or whatever. Mm -hmm. But really when you look at the world, we're a lot more similar than you, you know, you give yourself credit for. And a lot of the time it's really interesting to see how those different worlds kind of act. And a lot of the time it's more kind of almost like not, not political in like a negative sense, but just like kind of how they're governed and run and stuff. Yep. Um, anyway, it's, it's, yeah, I, I've enjoyed getting to know more kind of branches of, of faith and stuff as I've matured. The, the other thing that jumped out at me uh, with this was this idea that we can have a spirit of unity and not mm -hmm. all agree. Yep. Mm. And, mm -hmm. and I think, again, I'm not trying to just like point a finger at culture because frankly, we're, we need to be culture shapers. If that makes sense, we need to be a part. We, I can't just stand here and complain and not try to be a part of the solution. So I want you to know in saying this, I'm, I want to be a part of the solution. Um, but right now, if it seems like if you disagree with me, that means you must hate me and mm -hmm. everything I stand for. And we can't have conversation and discourse and we can't have different opinions. And we've seen that in our own country. And I'm not going to get political because I, that's not why we're here. But, it just did. Well, but it just did. But we, you know, we see it in politics where you either toe the party line or you do not agree. And, mm. and, and you're, you are valued less now because of, of your wayward or wrong opinion. And yet, what we see, well, well, at least what I see in, in this quote is that the spirit can still bring unity to, to us, even if we don't agree. And, and I've, I've been in church board meetings where there is a sense of unity uh, and the spirit is there, and, but we don't all agree. But how that meeting is conducted and how we talk with one another and how, you know, and how you share your opinions even if you get people on polar opposite sides of the issue, uh, it, you know, there are still when, when everything is said and done, you know, there's the spirit of unity. That, yeah. Okay. I was heard. My opinion was heard and I was valued and appreciated. And this is what we're doing together. I, and I just don't, I don't see that in other places. And, and, and frankly, I've not seen that in the church at times. Now I will say not here. Uh, at Sherwood and but I've been in other places where there has not been that where it's been disunity and it's been just anger and stuff like that and it's that's not that's not the spirit that's not the Holy Spirit at work I I put in our notes that I I've seen a kind of similar thing in the teaching world where you know like at our school we'll start saying okay we're going to start doing some of these things the same so there's some you know um kind of there is a little bit more unity in where we're going and but then there's always, you know, traditionally there would always be someone who'd be like, well, I'm not going to teach exactly the same as so-and-so. Like, no, no, we're not asking to teach exactly the same. Mm -hmm. We're just looking for some stuff to be unified. Like let's unify on the important things. And then, cause obviously every teacher is going to have a different style and every teacher is going to have a different kind of like, like their personality informs how they teach a lot of the time. So, and trying to get that message through that's uh, that, no, let's, let's agree on the, the, the essentials and the, the non-negotiables 
and then and then you have a little bit of freedom to kind of express it as you're as you see fit right mm-hmm. andrew any thoughts no i like what lucas just said i mean you all have the same goal um mm-hmm. but but the strength is you get to do that goal you know your own way um and kind of you know you're not you're not all trying to fit in that same cookie cutter and, and not being uncomfortable and stuff and mm-hmm. and i like that yeah you know, and Scott mentioned it here, and I, I made a note about it, about giftings. And and, mm. and the Bible's very clear that the Holy Spirit has given us each unique gifts. And yeah. and I don't know what it means when, you know, like, we need to be individuals, but we're also, we're a part of a body. But that, you know, God didn't create us to be just cookie cutter robots you know, he created Adam and Eve who were different and yet were together in unity and purpose and, and all that, but they were different. I bet you they had different opinions and Mm. I don't know. The biggest thing that jumped off for me in terms of this was just how we are so focused on this whole idea. If you don't agree, then you must hate. I don't know why we think that or where that's come from. I think, and we're so I think sensitive. a lot of time no. it can come from the fact that when when you think that you are so right, like when you have so much, um, I don't know the word I'm looking for, if it's hubris or foolishness or whatever, that you think pride. I'm 100% pride, pride. Yeah, that's the word I'm looking for. 100% right. Therefore, anybody who is against me, like is 100% against me and is also an idiot who I can learn nothing from, right? Like there's, there's that whole like mm-hmm. yeah, that's why like every time i go on twitter you know and or like even facebook like everyone's like don't read the comments don't read the comments and like and like oh it's like it's a wonderful little dialogue and oh no it went south so fast oh that was so fast oh why did i read <laughs> yeah. that you know yeah and yeah so well you want to be right you, you nobody wants to be wrong but True. you also learn more probably when you're wrong yeah well that but that takes humility doesn't it to be able to to admit when you're wrong and learn from it. Mm. I mean, look at, look at like, for example, a, a silly example would be like Xbox and PlayStation. There are people who will like get into screaming matches with other people over like, which one's better. And I'm like, yeah, I like Xbox. Like I see the value of PlayStation. I was like, I was like, when I was talking about like, yeah, their, their console looks better. Like I like the look of it better than this one. I was like, but I'm still going to go with this one. And, but I'm not mad at anybody for being a PlayStation person. Like they're basically the same thing guys. Like it's, oh, I'm you can't break it. To you, you can't, you can't say that. You can't have that. You can't have what? that opinion. I, I can't believe you said that. I'm going to get canceled. Oh my word. Can you imagine if somehow that happened? <laughs> but that's another thing. Like cancer, cancel culture is the opposite of what, of what this is. Right. This is someone has an opinion and I don't like that opinion. So we are going to cancel that person. And I'm going to, I'm going to rally people that are not informed around this mm-hmm. and, and who were not there that have no context. And we're going to just get the hate and the rage going and we're going to shut this person down mm-hmm. and, and we're going to send threats all because someone has a different opinion. Mm. And, 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 and I get that some opinions are crazy and there are opinions that, that are out there that I obviously don't agree with, but come on. But you don't hate the person. But you don't hate the person. And I, yeah. anyway, and more than ever right now, we're seeing the need for unity and we see, you know, it doesn't take long to look on, on the, on the, on the news to see just how, how that's lacking. There just isn't that spirit of unity and and some might say that it is, you know, we're trying to be united, but then if something comes along, it just gets shot down. And I don't know. And I'm, I'm rambling and saying the same thing over and over again, <clears throat> but I've, I've never been more convinced that, that the Holy spirit is needed desperately right now. Um, in, anyway, in order to be unified, you need to have something to unify around, mm. which is why Christians should be naturally pretty unified because we have such a powerful thing to unify around. If you don't have something to unify around as Christians, it means that we're focusing on the wrong things or like, obviously that's like heresy aside, right? Like cults or whatever. But like, if you are like a Bible believing Christian, there should be a more than enough stuff to rally around. And yeah, you know, they, 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 you know, they use lasers and smoke in their worship and you guys use flags or you guys just sing hymns all the time. Like 
that's whatever that's preference but like what can what 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 really matters we agree on and i think in this in the world today there's less and less stuff that people are unified around like with, whether it's like systems like you know patriotism or that uh, community or whatever things that used people used to rally around a lot of those have been disintegrating so you're getting less and less of that mm -hmm. and then in the church people are less rallied around that but even within the church like we need to make sure that we're rallying around uh you know the gospel and and the bible and make these things that actually matter and that not focusing on the stuff that doesn't matter hmm. yeah i think the the takeaway for me is going to be um when i find myself in a place of disagreement with someone are my attitudes those of love charity and grace uh -huh. or or are they are they disunity because you, you know what you you hear me i i don't know how else to say it mm -hmm. and i might not agree with the person but how i treat that person um matters and i would want to treat that person the way christ did anyway i th yep that's that's my theology course right there <laughs> or <laughs> or three sentences into a lesson a plus <laughs> oh yes <laughs> um, I told you that this course that I'm in, the, the prof marks harder on, he set a higher, he has set a personal higher standard than the course requires. Mm -hmm. And if you don't meet his personal standard, not the course requirement, he won't mark you as well. I put that to the test. <laughs> I lost marks. I lost. <laughs> I was not happy. He wasn't happy. I can get, I can uh, back that up. Yeah, I was there. Well, gentlemen, why don't we uh, go from our holy huddle? Let's break. Um, hold on. Is that a sport term? We're going to we're going to break break and yeah. go to our sports and start stuff. That's how we're keeping Matt alive in the podcast. Mm. <laughs> uh, so he's, sports it's like he's here with us. Uh, sports and star stuff. So this is basically a very simple game that Matt uh, Matt Barber brought to us a while ago. That is, I'm going to give a term, or one of us each week, but this week it's me. He's going to give a term to the guys and to you uh, watching, listening, wherever you may be. And, and it's either going to be something related to space or sports. Um, it was funnier when we had Matt because Matt... <laughs> Matt did not, picks polo every time. Matt didn't. Matt didn't live in the the space world, but very much in the sports. And Lucas is some kind of amalgamation, I think, of both worlds. Andrew, are you very sporty? Um, I like hockey. Yeah. Hmm. And I am in no way, shape, or form in the sport world. So it's always been interesting. Anyway, so we're going to. I'm going to give you the term, gentlemen, and then what I'd like you to do is to text me what your answer is. Once we've get, once we get the answers in. Um, I will read your two answers, the right answer and a made up answer. And your job is to guess which one is correct. So gentlemen and ladies that are, well, gentlemen and ladies that are watching from wherever the term is <clears throat> Fogo. Your term is Fogo and begin. Can you use it in a sentence? Uh, look at that Fogo. <laughs> That's as good as it's gonna get. Uh, herm. Herm? Uh, herm. Uh. Fogo. Wow. Hmm. That's an impressive Fogo. Oh, I'm having a hard time with this one. Now, for those that are uh, live right now, don't cheat. Don't don't go look it up on the Googles. And if you do do that, please don't put it in chat. Haven't received was, anything. 
Oh, I just sent mine. It's the slowest response I've ever done. I'm normally a lot faster. My my brain must be slowing down. All right. How much ice cream? Yeah. All right. So the term again was Fogo. Then allow me to read uh, in no particular order. Fogo is in ping pong when the opponents have a rally that lasts longer than 20 returns. Fogo, lacrosse, a player that's on the field just for the faceoff, and then they go back to the bench. Fogo, the official name for the basket sport fishermen used to carry fish. Sorry, let me read that with different emphasis. Fogo, the official name for the basket sport fishermen used to carry fish. Or Fogo, the Chinese deep space radio telescope that is currently orbiting Earth. Do you want me to give those another pass? Mm. Ping pong. So we got ping pong, sport fisherman, lacrosse, or a Chinese deep space radio telescope. Ladies and gentlemen, you may cast your votes now. Uh, I'm saying lacrosse. Cross for Andrew. I'm going to say, how, and how what's spelled F O G O? Yes. Okay. Uh, I am going to say lacrosse as well. Now, I'm curious as to why both of you chose lacrosse. Because I feel like you say lacrosse all the time. So I thought you were going to pick one to try to get us, get Darn an over on us. Uh, you two, the main reason. you two are so smart. So Fogo <laughs> is lacrosse and it means face off, get off. And it is, oh. it is uh, when a player on the field is just there for the face off and then they return to the bench. They get for the record. I picked first. That's and true. Did you pick it for the same uh, reason or did you just think it was? I uh, knew when Andrew said lacrosse, he picked it because I always say lacrosse for something. No, no. I picked it because I, I just for some reason thought that that's what it was. Oh. You were just right. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what? We can agree to disagree. <laughs> I think. Okay. All right. Well, there we go. Well, good job, guys. That was your, in honor of Matthew Barber, that was your sports and star stuff. All right, guys. You can follow our podcast on all the social medias that matter. You got your Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, don't forget YouTube. You can, they're all at Oxford Holy Club. Uh, throw up the hashtag OH Club if you're using social media. Uh, we would love a five star rating on iTunes. And if you leave us a five star rating, we will even read it on the air. Ooh. Not <laughs> only that, but you can send your questions to us at oxfordholyclub.com. Browse our merch and much more. And folks, you know that we don't pay to advertise. So any growth that we have comes from you clicking that share button with others. So make sure you share, share, share. And until next time, folks, I'm waiting for it. Keep spiritually fit and have fun. And have fun. <laughs>